Hi, this is Sandra. I am here today for a quick video um, to talk about one of the most pertinent math questions that we can run across. So I was talking with a parent today about the infamous question that I've considered often myself. Should we be teaching kids multiple ways to solve a single problem or is it confusing them? So I've been thinking about this a lot and I want to share with you guys where I've kind of come to in my process on this. So let's take a look at a simple subtraction problem. And we'll just take a look at two ways. Now there's many ways to model and understand subtraction. Um, but the question that I wanna focus and stay focused on today is, is it helpful to show kids multiple ways to solve a problem? Or should they just, is it simpler for their brains if they just know one way and stick with it? Okay, so I'm not gonna tell you, I don't have a concise one answer. I kind of am, have two answers to this, yes and no, but I wanna show you why and what I mean by that. So let me go over here and we'll just look at something really basic. Of course, you can scale this up to multi-digits, but let's take a look at 15 minus nine and just take a look at two different ways that you could solve this problem. There's multiple ways and I may end up doing videos on different ways that you could solve subtraction problems because I think it's fascinating to see all the different ways to think about it. But let's take a look at these two and then talk about is there value for kids to learn two of these methods or many more? And kind of alongside that, what tools should they be using? Because as you know, if you've um, been teaching math or working with your kids, um, homeschooling them, there's so many manipulatives you can use, okay? My favorite two are 10 frames and an abacus, and I'll talk about why. But there's number lines, there's base 10 blocks, there's cues and air rods, there's all kinds of, there's number charts, there's um, 120 charts, hundreds charts. There's a lot of different ways. And I think each one of them has a unique benefit. Um, and I'll save the punchline for the end so you stick with me here. But keep in mind, the question is, should we be using all of these different manipulatives? Should we be teaching different methods? So the tools and the methods are kind of separate things, but they do go hand in hand. So here we go. Let's take a look at the tr traditional algorithm for a simple problem, 15 minus nine. Now, here's the thing. If kids have sailed through elementary math and they're in upper elementary or older, and they've never had a really strong foundation in number sense, and I would say a simple way to explain what I mean by number sense is they have a really conceptual understanding that's built through hands-on experience that translates to mental math. So they, see the math that they're doing. It makes sense to them. As opposed to, because to truly understand what something is, you have to see what it's not. So number sense is this realm of conceptual understanding. It's not what I call coding, math coding. We don't want to treat math as if we're writing a code for human brains, little human brains, that they have to go through the whole process, do all the if-thens, um, figure out in every single you have to write a different code package for every single type of problem, okay? If you set kids up with that, if that's kind of the framework you're coming from as a teacher or a homeschooler, um, kids are going to be overwhelmed by all these separate code packages, and they'll have to figure out what you use when and which steps to go through. And if you miss a step, the code breaks. You don't get the right answer. Or you may not even know if it's the right answer because you have no sense of what number would make sense in that problem. Okay, so... That's what I mean by number sense, really, truly making sense of numbers, not just having a step, um, a set of steps that you follow through and you have to make sure you grab the right set of steps to use. OK, so if kids have had this math coding as opposed to the conceptual understanding number sense, they will most likely at some point in their life see a problem like 15 minus nine and they'll say, OK, the steps I use are this. I borrow from here. You can see where I'm going with this. So that has nothing left. I bring one over, make this a 15. And now I have 15 minus nine. Some of them may not even realize the irony in this because they don't have the foundation of number sense and feeling like they're in charge of numbers. They feel much more like numbers are in charge of them and they just have to obey what the numbers say to do. We don't wanna build that sense in kids. Okay, so 15 minus nine. Now they either may be stuck because they're like, oh, I still don't know what to do or count backwards or some something that relies on counting. So counting is one way to do math, 
But unfortunately, if you don't give kids other tools and other ways to think about math, it becomes the largest way that they think about math. They just rely on counting no matter what they're looking at. Okay, so anyways, from here you can, kids will rely, they may do their fingers, they may count backwards, they may do something. Maybe they work with doubles and near doubles and they kind of go from there. Anyhow, this kind of, it doesn't have a clear one step to do if kids are just relying on the traditional algorithm. Now, here's one other method. This is my personal favorite, but um, there's so many to choose from. And if kids are, the more they're exposed to, this is part of my answer, the more they're exposed to, the more um, they can pull in what makes sense to them in the moment. But let me show you one method that you may never have seen before, but bear with me and see if this makes more sense to you like it did to me. If we think about 15 minus nine, so the key to number sense is place value. That's absolutely the key. You have to be able to compose and decompose numbers in their place values. So I work a lot in my classes and with my kids with um, 10 frames to start with. So as you're building up all of the number sense up through 20, I think 10 frames are the best tool you can use. Okay, it really builds a sense of um, what numbers are, what they look like, how you can break them apart and put them together. And that is adding and subtracting just as you're building out those numbers. Okay, so if we see 15 as a full 10 frame and five more and kids, sorry, that was loud. Kids, if they are building that up and they just use 10 frames um, instead of using 10 frames and number lines and base 10 blocks and cues and rods, if you just stick with one thing, is another part of my answer, then they can build a really solid foundation in seeing how that works and feeling like they really own it and understand it. So they'll see 15 as 10 and five, but to them, those are not numbers. Those are pictures of 10 objects arranged in five and five, and then an extra five more in a 10 frame. And then they see, we wanna take away nine. So here's the magic. If they see this as 10 and five, and they have those pieces that tangibly or in their head, they can take apart, mess with, combine any way they want. A really simple way to teach them to do this is say, work with your tens, because if you're laying a good foundation in number sense, you build up to this by really strongly emphasizing all the possible combinations of 10. So you say, let's take away nine from the 10, because by the time you get to subtraction, your combinations of 10 should be solid. That should be your foundation at that point. So we'll say take away nine here because that's not so much a subtraction problem as prior knowledge. They know that nine and one make 10 and they can do any combination of that. Maybe they don't even know the term fact families, but they know that nine and one make 10. So you can do minus plus anything that you want with that. So they know this is one and then they see here, I'm sorry, I don't have the actual things in it, but they see that there's still five, invisible five left over. So you took away nine from 10 to get one, and then you still have this five. So what you have is six pieces left over, okay? Now, even writing that out looks a little bit foreign because most of us haven't learned this exact algorithm for doing it. But what you're doing is really basing it on this picture in their head of something that they already know, okay? So this is one alternate method to the traditional algorithm. Um, and it's based on prior knowledge of the combinations of 10 and prior knowledge of addition. So you're turning subtraction into addition and there's nothing new to introduce if you do it this way. So I personally love this method. It definitely scales up to multi-digits, but I'll make that a separate video. Um, and then once they get into multi-digits, I always break out the abacus and some, you can also use a rec and rec. It's basically the same thing. Ideally, you have groups of five that are different colors. So I've made this work by drawing a black line through these ones to, so you can subitize. So um, my answer to kind of close this up here, is it helpful to kids to have different methods for solving one problem or does it confuse them? That is a very good question. And I consider it almost daily myself as I'm teaching and making math curriculum myself. Um, I would say, first of all, in the beginning, when you're laying a foundation, 
or if you're coming back and you're trying to fill in gaps in their knowledge. I personally would recommend minimizing the number of tools or math manipulatives you're using because you want them to really latch on to one visual and be able to work with that first physically and then picture pictorially mentally um okay so do one thing one tool to really master it now methods are a different story because and this is going to take me maybe several mini videos to get through but every method has its own purpose okay there's um methods for subtracting nine specifically and then build on that to subtract eight of course subtracting 10 would come first so these are kind of different methods subtracting 10 subtracting nine subtracting eights working with doubles working on a number line finding constant difference um turning things into fact families counting on counting up there's so many different methods to use and I don't think kids should be limited to just do one because every single problem, oh, then there's making friendly numbers and turning just, that's kind of the constant difference idea, moving things up to a friendlier number just to find that difference and understanding that it doesn't matter what the original numbers are as long as you're looking at the difference. Okay, so all of these methods work in different situations. So it's not that we're saying you need to teach all the methods because some will click for different kids. I wouldn't say it depends on the kid. I would say it depends on the problem. You need to have an array of methods because different methods work for different problems, not that different methods work for different kids. I think every kid can understand any method. If, here's the big catch. This is what I wanna end with. If you teach it in a way that really promotes number sense. So going back to the beginning, we're not trying to build up these code packages where they learn the traditional algorithm. You go next door, you borrow one, you bring it over, you subtract. Okay, there's a set of steps um, and you only do it if the bottom is bigger. So there's a whole different code package if the bottom is not bigger. Okay, that's a mess. We're used to it. It's comfortable to us. It's the way we learned, but it's a mess. And it's a lot of steps for kids to learn. It's a lot of if thens. And in the end, it doesn't leave them with a good tool because they're still left with subtracting 15 minus nine. If you Give them a technique, whatever it is, um, and really give them the tools to touch it and keep touching it until they get it ingrained in their brain and it's a mental picture to them. Um, and if you give them an, the number sense foundation so that it makes sense to them so much that they know that they're the ones in control of the numbers, the numbers are not in control of them. So they can do whatever they need to do. And that's where the different methods come in. Um, and I'll talk about that more in future videos here. But I just want to um, share this much in this little video today that it. I believe in the end to answer the question, is it valuable or is it confusing? I'll say it this way. Is it confusing to teach students more than one method to learn how to answer one problem? Um, I would say, Yes, it can be confusing. And that's where a lot of, that's the um, position a lot of people come from because it's been their own experience. But also, no, it's not confusing if each one of those methods is taught in a way that unlocks the number sense behind it. So they see how the numbers can be decomposed into their place values. They see where you're taking things from because all these different methods come to that basis of decomposing numbers I'm going to do this for a minute here. Decomposing numbers so that you see them in their place value structure. And then the different methods just rely on where are we going to take from if we're subtracting or where are we going to add to? How are we going to do this? In the end, of course, you just get a number. It's just numbers, beget numbers. But the process, if you understand how it's working, what's going on with it, um, is very valuable because it helps kids see what's going on and um, own it. They'll own that knowledge. And then they don't have to rely on just following steps because they really know what's going on. They can make variations on it. They can apply it to new situations. Um, it doesn't matter as much if it's in a word problem or if it's just naked numbers because they'll, they'll know what those numbers are and how to work with them. Okay, so in that sense, if whatever method you're teaching relies on building out that number sense as the foundation of it, then I believe 
that all the other methods are going to latch on. It's just like learning anything. If you have something that's already in your brain and it makes sense, and then you can connect it to something else, and that also makes sense and build it out, then you're giving your kids a really enriched view of mathematics um, and just of thinking logically, thinking critically, and being confident in themselves as learners. So multiple methods can, if done right, uh, really enrich a math education and give kids a broader understanding, give them more, um, more ways to approach a problem so that they can, at a moment's notice, choose the most convenient one, um, rather than just having one method that works for everything, but it may not always be the most convenient for that situation. So final answer here um, for the moment, multiple methods are good for multiple types of problems. Multiple manipulatives don't necessarily help um, if you're looking at one kid at a time. Um, if you're looking at one kid at a time, you wanna get them really solid with a visual of how the numbers work. Once they get that, they have number sense. They see what the numbers are, they know what to do with them. Then by all means, build out. Show them how it also works on a number line. Show them how it also works with base 10 blocks, with Q's and air rods, with the hundreds chart. All of that is enrichment and really deepens and extends their understanding so that it's easier to go to the bigger steps. Um, but it has to be, you have to have that locked in foundation first of what the numbers are. Okay, if you have any questions, I'm very happy to answer them either in the comments or come on and share more videos with this. Um, I would like to come back and share more videos of different ways to approach subtraction because I think it's fascinating to see that there's so much more than our um, traditional algorithm where you borrow and carry and do all of that. So I hope that this is helpful and inspiring. Um, leave questions if you have any, and I will be back with more later. Thank you for watching.